What's up, wrestling fans? Ron Musto here with Turnbuckle Topics, and boy, do we have a fun episode for you today. Primetime and myself had the opportunity to sit down with the queen of interviews herself, Alicia Atut. That's right. We interviewed the queen of interviews. We threw a lot of weird questions at her. We get to talk about what were some of the weirdest DMs she may have received from a fan were. We talk about her favorite t-shirts when it comes down to band and wrestling t-shirts. We talk about some of her favorite memories from All In. And Alicia gives a few tips on how to help grow your brand and eliminate self Doubt. So as always, make sure to follow us on Twitter at TT underscore four Y-O-U at KVNG Primetime. Make sure to follow Linz B Honest and make sure to follow Chris Pinero. That's at Old School Pants as well as Champions Advantage Podcast. That's at Champions Pod. So this is going to last about a half hour for everybody. Not too long, not too short. Hopefully you get a chance to like everything that we got to say to Alicia Atu. And if you have any questions for us, any questions for her, make sure to go to her YouTube channel, her Instagram page, her Twitter page, anywhere you you can find Alicia to make sure to hit that follow, like, subscribe button, anything that you need to do. So people, let's jump right into it. Prime time and myself sit down with the queen of interviews, Alicia too. What's up, Rundown fans? If you're like me, finding a place to eat is never an easy thing to do. Whether I'm in my hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania, or traveling, I always find myself wishing I had a trusted friend I could call to tell me where to eat. The infatuation is that friend. The infatuation helps you find the right restaurant for any situation. Need a place for a first date? Trying to find a spot for your birthday that you don't want to celebrate except you also kind of do? The infatuation has you covered in all these situations and many, many more. So if you ever need to find a place to eat, but don't want to read through thousands of unreliable crowdsource reviews, hit up theinfatuation.com, T-H-E-I-N-F-A-T-U-A-T-I-O-N.com, or download their free app for iOS and Android to search thousands of restaurant reviews and guides in 22 major cities around the world. Or just let The Infatuation do the work for you by sending a text to 64 Five six zero. Once again, sending a text to six four five six zero. A real person will respond and help you find a restaurant that's perfect for whatever situation you may find yourself in. All right, everybody, and welcome to the interview of the interview queen, Alicia. To Alicia, thank you very much for taking the time out to talk with us today. I have to say thank you so much to you guys for taking interest, wanting me on your show. We've been talking through Twitter for a little bit now. It finally lined up, so I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to keep it roughly, you know, between 30 and 40 minutes. And what we're going to do is me and Prime, we're going to go back and forth and we're going to ask you one question a piece and, you know, you elaborate all you want to. Hopefully we have a few that are a little bit out of the ordinary that you may haven't have heard, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get this thing started. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Perfect. So the first thing I wanted to, I wanted to kick this off, you know, hot. So the f- first thing I have for you is when you were talking to Scarlett Bordeaux and the <laughs> whole, you know, you're a five, I'm a 10 thing happened. I just wanted to let you know, I completely disagree with that. I would probably give you like a 9.75. I can't. <laughs> I can't I, the, the reason why I can't commit to the 10 because you said that you love pineapple on pizza. Dude, it's delicious. Um, it, it, you still feel that way. I, I'm not going to change it for a 0.25 in my rating. No, of oh course. I love pineapple on pizza. <laughs> I heard that, and and because I was watching one of your Q and A, or like uh, the one of the videos where you're like some random facts that you may not know about me. Yeah, and you, you said that you love it on pizza, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> but it happens. It happens. So, Prime, what do you have? I was just gonna ask. <laughs> my bad. All right. So, since since we're kind of still on the intro a little bit, I wanted to ask you what was your weirdest or funniest intro that you ever got from anybody? Ooh. That's difficult. I once interviewed Rosemary and we were wrapping up the interview and I think 
I just wanted her to say something to the fans. I, I always wrap up my interview saying, hey, anything you want to leave with all of the awesome people watching? And mm-hmm. rather than actually say something, you know, I want to say this qualifies as an answer. Nothing was said, but much was said. She just licked, just licked my hand. And I, I ran away. So oh that's one of the most memorable and bizarre and weird <laughs> answers I have ever had in an interview. <laughs> okay. she, didn't, she, she just licked your hand. Yeah, like it was a, like an actual full-on lick. I was genuinely disgusted. <laughs> did you even say thank you after it? Or were you just like, oh, God, I got to go? Oh, I, was, I just kind of did a little head shake and was like, um, okay, bye. And I, just, I, just, I just walked right out of frame. Yep. Oh, my God. I did never in a million years that I think you would say someone just openly licked your hand. So that that's actually a really good segue into the next question that I have for you. It's because we have uh, our co-host on the show, actually my cousin, very, very good friend of mine. Uh, her name's Lindsay. And we did one of our episodes talking strictly about messed up direct messages that she, she received. Oh, and, gosh. And, and I know I was watching your interviews that you did with Switchblade Jay White. And I know you guys talked a little bit about some of the dms that you received so my question not even anything like sexual or anything along those lines what is the weirdest thing that you think somebody ever reached out to you for via dm so many people ask if i like wearing socks or go barefoot like that's probably that's probably not the weirdest because the weirdest ones are definitely just straight up sexual and it's like why yeah just, I'm never replying to you dude but <laughs> it's, it's the sweet ones like whether it's an Instagram Q&A or a live it, it always comes up and I'm like why are you asking me it's ridiculous oh and then one time one time I just replied using a because I was doing an Instagram Q&A like the new feature thing in your stories yeah. and I literally just replied you know how they have those super zoom things and there's the love one where it's just all these hearts and goes yeah Mm -hmm. i literally just zoomed in on my feet and like super fuzzy socks so it wasn't anything weird i would never send someone to put under their feet but i I just like zoomed in on it just to like make fun of this person i'm like are you seriously asking me that and it was just (laughs) and this happens a lot so often like every time i do a q a or just i'll just get it randomly dm'd me a couple times a week it's it it's so weird oh barefoot or or socks the yep. same the same person? No, different people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is what is people's obsession with I never got it. I don't like feet at all. I don't even really <laughs> like my own. I don't understand. I don't like my own. And they this no. I don't it's good for you. I mean, we were talking uh, uh when, when I was doing this with, with, with my cousin Lindsay, she said some of the stuff that she received was just disgusting. She said one guy asked her, he's like, <laughs> he's like, Can you please throw up in my mouth? Well, he said puke, but he's like, Can you please puke in my mouth? I've had stuff like that, or people will ask, like, hey, do you sweat? Like, any chance you can wring that out? I'm like, one, like, who profusely oh. sweats that much? And two, no. just That no. is disgusting. Those you just ignore. Like, why would you even entice? No, that's just wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. Ignore, block, turn off all messages. So after oh, that, after people seem to love and just want to see Alicia's feet, Prime, what, what question do you have for her? <laughs> I don't even know how to follow that, but <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask you one of three questions throughout this interviewing process. So this is the first one. So if you could interview anybody that is deceased, what musical artist would you interview? George interview? Harrison. George Harrison for sure. Okay. I'm a massive, massive Beatles fan. If I had to pick like a favorite band of all time, it would probably be them. And it's not like a cliche, like oh the Beatles. It's like I grew up on the Beatles since I was a child like in the womb and I, yeah. I love them and there's just something he just seemed like the sweetest most down-to-earth beautiful soul and just have a one-on-one with him I think would actually be life-changing so yeah he would be that's would deep be that one yeah that's deep sure. so you were swimming around the womb in a yellow submarine oh yeah oh, oh yeah it's <laughs> fantastic <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, next question that we have for you is, like I said, we're just we're just gonna pop these out one at a time, and yeah, and dig ho- it. Hopefully, we get a chance to stump you on one of them. The DM one I loved. I didn't love, but that, that's so weird and awesome. In one of your fun facts about you videos, you said that you currently own over five hundred band slash wrestling T shirts. Now, everybody has a bunch of T-shirts, right? But there's usually two or three that you just wear all the time. 
I know I have certain ones that I, they just feel better. I want to wear them as much as I can. So do you have two or three of your incredible collection of t-shirts that you, that you think you favor over the other ones? Okay. So this comes down to comfort and then likability. So it's like, I like all the bands and wrestlers that I interview, yeah. but there are some where it's just like, it's that perfect blend of like, yeah, I like this person. And yeah, that's a comfy shirt. Yeah. So I have this Marty Skrull shirt. That's just bad. Oh. Literally has like the villain mask that he wears. And uh-huh. then in this like Gothic text, it just says the villain Marty Skrull. So that's one of them. Then um, there's a band called Left the Fall that I've interviewed a ton, and they have this really cool jersey shirt, and it's oversized on me, and it's the comfiest. <laughs> Probably, like, if you guys follow me on Instagram or if fans listening right now do or they want to, at Alicia Toop, um, it literally is, shows up probably, like, three times a week. I wash that shirt way too much. Um, and then the third one, huh, let me, th- oh, I have, I think it's in my drawer, actually. I'm mm-hmm. in my right now um i have a starcast shirt which i got last year's starcast and um the crew gave that to me and i wear that all of the time because when i look down and it makes me happy and two it is very comfortable and three i'm repping a really awesome company so yeah just 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 the memories just the memories alone would be enough i know it's got to be the soft style right because i have a couple bullet club shirts i have a super kick kick club shirt i have an okada shirt I, i have them I got them all from Hot Topic, and I heard uh, Matt say on one of the Being the Elites, he's like, oh, is it the soft style one? It's just how they're made. <laughs> these, are, these are unbelievable. Yeah, they're extremely comfortable. I think the one that I got for the Skrull one was in, like, a pro wrestling crate because I used to do unboxings, oh. um, and that it's super soft, too. And it's like, yeah, it's a nice fit. Shut up. Pro wrestling Shout tees. out pro wrestling <laughs> fire this year too. <laughs> and, uh, all right, Prime, what do you got? All right, well, you're at a bar, and it's time for you to do karaoke. Ooh. What is your go-to karaoke song, but it's a WWF theme song? Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yes, good question. Uh, that's a really good question. I've not, I haven't thought of that one. Um, okay, I'm just going to, like, think of wrestling theme songs. Um... Sean Michaels? That's always a go-to. Yeah, like Sexy Boy. How does that not get the crowd going, yeah. right? And I think, Prime, I think at some point you should have said ones with words. Because oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure all of us could just sit there and go, dun 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 It's got to have some sort of substance to it, but Sexy Boy, yeah. I. Oh, it's so good. There's so much attitude in that song. You could, like, strut your stuff on the stage. I feel, I'm feeling it right now, guys. <laughs> just, you know proud as a peacock so so that's i i, I would probably sing sexy boy too uh, if if i wouldn't sing sexy boy i'd probably sing sing edge's theme song oh Maybe. yeah uh, okay. I, got, I got a younger brother and he is a, a, a huge edge head and we would just he would just play that song at random times during the day throughout all of the whole the, the whole 2000s decade so i think i'll be pretty good with really yeah, he's like, I can imagine you guys like being in the same house when you're younger and he just comes into your room like on this no, day. No, the worst part is we shared a room for the longest time. Oh, we shared you a room. escape. So if I'm if I'm like pissed off or something, I had a bad day. I'd come upstairs from, you know, from high school or whatever. I'd come upstairs and he would just start playing that song. For the most part, it got me pumped up. But if oh my I had a bad day, I'd be like, Joey, turn that shit off. Okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> awesome. Now, the next one I have is I'm, I'm, I'm going to dive into wrestling a little bit now. And it's a question for it, it's a two parter. And it's when you got the call to work at Impact, but also got the call to cover all in for both of those companies for Impact and for we'll just call all in a company because it wasn't AEW at the time. Who was the one? Uh, who were the people that made the call to you? Like, hi, Alicia, it's da 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 You know, we would like you to come and do this for us. Or did they contact you in different ways? Yeah, so both interactions were actually in person. The first one, when it came to Impact, um, everything was sorted through the VP, Scott Demore. I was working for his local, pro- or local to me, um, his local promotion, BCW. Mm-hmm. I did two shows just for BCW solely. And the third show happened to be a BCW Impact co-pro. So since they were using me for their Blu-rays and stuff, I think they just made sense to keep me on. They liked what I was doing. So I ended up working that co-pro. And from there, 
I guess they liked what they oh, saw yeah. there as well. So I continued uh, doing all of their Canadian dates. It was seriously just a very quick conversation. Hey, are you into this? Yes, wicked. Um, <laughs> it was very simple, and that was that. And then for All In, I was at a ROH show in Toronto a few months before StarCast and All In um, happened. Mm-hmm. And one of my main goals was to just catch up with Cody, you know, obviously say hey and stuff, and um, – mention all into him i as soon as that show was announced i wanted to be a part of it so badly oh, yeah. so i walked up to him and before i really got to say much he looked up and was like hey are you all in yet alicia and i'm like no i wanted to talk to you yeah. about that so backstage he gave me his contact info and um, cause i think before that we were only linked up on twitter and then we had a couple of text messages go back and forth and he knew i was interested he knew i wanted to be on it and then randomly um i was told i would be a part of starcast which was incredible Mm -hmm. but then randomly i got put into a message box on twitter with ian riccaboni and all of the announcers and he said you are our broadcast team for all in and i i just cried i was oh my god amazed and shocked and just so happy because i've been watching him since i was little he's one of my favorite wrestlers the bucks are my favorite tag team and just knowing i was going to be there meant the world to me and knowing that he had the confidence in me to work for him it was just it still makes me like kind of you know it's emotional it's amazing so it was very cool that's how it all came about that's that's incredible it had to make you pinch yourself because i know going through a lot of your videos you said on numerous occasions that cody Rhodes or cody you know depending on what mood he's in is (laughs) one of if not your favorite wrestler of all time so that had that had a big like whoa it's just surreal you see these guys on tv and not ever do you think unless it's a meet and greet of some sort um this is before i had my interview site of course you know you never think you'll you'll meet them or you'll cross paths mm. with them paths <laughs> look at me listening paths <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah it was just it was all very surreal that's that's incredible to hear and congratulations for you on that i mean the sky's the limit moving forward so uh Brian, you. what do you have I mean, I'm just gonna piggyback off of that one and say, other than dashing, other than dashing Cody, what is your favorite Cody character? Uh, favorite Cody character? Um, I like how you knew dashing was my favorite. You guys have done your research. Um, I would. No, it's awesome. That's awesome. From one person who like stalks to the other. Well done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's right. Uh, probably I'd have to say like now American Nightmare. I love the attitude, especially with Brandy by his side. It's been really cool to see the crowd just hate them at times, but it's not a hatred. It's like a love to hate them. You know, she comes out kind of like spoiled and, oh, I'm better than you. Yep. And it's just, it's cool seeing them portray these people, you know, kind of breaking that wall there that they're not. And I think they do it incredibly. Plus his wrestling's only gotten better. So yeah, I'd have to say, I'd have to say Cody now. It has, by the I way, think... go ahead. By the way, I think Dash and his hair by this table just because how cool he looked when he looked in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> tough oh one to gosh. Touch. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the dashing character. And actually, Alicia, I just wanna just piggyback off of that as well. At all in, I know one of the most emotional moments that I saw just watching a pay per view. And I it can be all in, it could be New Japan, it could be Ring of Honor, it could be WWE, doesn't matter. One of the Ooh, most- can I guess? What's that? Can I guess it? Go ahead. Was when he won the NWA championship. Right there. And I was going to ask, yeah. I was going to ask, were you backstage in the, in the vicinity of which you can see him celebrating after the match? Um, he actually walked right by everybody. There was a bunch of us watching pretty much right out of the gate. Like there was a, there's that big stage with all of the lighting. Then there's a little stairwell and then there was gorilla and there were about like 20 to 30 of us watching off the monitors right where the stairs were. And as soon as he finished, he came back. And tears were in his eyes. You could tell how proud Brandy was. And they walked by everyone just smiling at all of us. And then they kind of went together. And, and I think all, I think it was either the Bucks that came out or I don't remember. Um, but yeah, and it was just, you, you could tell how much it meant to them. Not, not just because of the legacy of that title, of course, but just as a couple. And just that night being so so massive. And this is, of course, me guessing. I don't know what they were feeling, but I can imagine. Oh, yeah. Um, there were a lot of emotions going through those two that night. And it was, it was really cool just seeing them walk backstage and knowing the magic that had just been created. And I, I had to ask because I, had, uh, I was living in North Carolina at the time. And during All In, at that exa- not that, at that exact moment, but before that match started, a huge thunderstorm came through and we lost 
all connection. So I had, oh, no. it was, it was awful. I had, I was switching between my phone, my iPad, my television, my computer. I had like nine different things going and I, I got it up on my phone. I, I had to watch the entire match on my phone. And when it was over, one single tear fell down and hit my screen. And I said to myself, I was like, you know what? That's probably the first time I teared up watching a match in 10 years or so because of how emotional it was. I I loved it. I loved it. It's insane how many times I cried that night. I felt like such a (laughs) sob. God. You didn't see the makeup. Like, what's her problem? I'm like, I'm just happy. Just just constantly dabbing underneath your eyes with a napkin. Don't want to smear the makeup or anything. Yeah, once my promo was done, I didn't care about the makeup. <laughs> yeah, screw it. <laughs> screw it. All right, Prime, what do you have for? Okay, this is the second part to that first question I asked earlier. Is if you can interview somebody who's dead. Not again. No way. Prime, are you here? Hell, Prime, are you here or you leave? Oh, he's going to leave. Oh, there you are. Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, if you could interview somebody who's deceased, what actor would you interview? Actor. Actor. Hmm. Or actress. That's really tricky. It's weird. When it comes to movies, like, I've I've binge-watched so many films, I can't even think of, like, a dead actor. Like, that's how... (laughs) I don't have, like, a hit list for for actors or actresses. That's, like... you. You said your goal was to stump me, and I'm stumped. Um, man. I don't have a hit list. I don't have a No, I mean, like, when I say hit list, it's like, I have, like, a wrestling and a music hit list. Like, there are people that I need to interview. Um, and then, you know, I shoot them off the list. But, oh, actor. I don't think I have an answer for you guys. Like, you can leave this question in so people can laugh at me, but... I um <laughs> oh, I will. Well, don't worry about that. So if anybody has so how about this? For anybody that's listening here, play this game on your own. If you could interview any actor or actress who is deceased because Prime loves dead stuff, um <laughs> make sure you make sure you put it in the comments. Make sure you let Alicia know. Let her know what dead actor or actress that you would like to interview. So we'll leave that one unanswered for now. You can always bring it up in a random Q and A on YouTube or something. We'll we'll send you a message. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know who would be cool? Chris Farley. Oh. There you go. Yes. It took me a second. Like the whole time you were talking, I was listening and I was like, yes, leave YouTube or leave comments, guys. Yeah. Do it. Do it. But then I was thinking, who would be Chris Farley? Yes. Oh, that would be so much fun. That guy in a little Oh my coat. God. Oh my God. I just I just want to hear him say, I want him to get in position. And I want him to pull his belt up right in front of me and just scream in my face in a van down by the river. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, but I'm, oh, he'd, be, he'd be cool. He's yeah. A Farley fan. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to keep going here for about 10 minutes or so. And this is, this is one of the more important questions that I had for you, because I think there are a lot of people out there that want your insight on this, mainly because, you know, we've been, We've been we really only started uh, the Turnbuckle Topics brand uh, about a year ago, and it's it started off as fun and it's turned into something pretty big that I think a lot of us take some pride in. We have a decent following. And when you're online, you you know this, you see all of these different people trying to brand themselves, All, all these people trying to promote their work whether they give it a a gimmick name whether they just make it themselves they're trying to promote themselves and their brand at this point alicia Atut is a brand you know you there's certain people that that love you to death that all they want to do is know what you're doing when you wake up in the morning i mean that's creepy but it it happens (laughs) oh it's it's true though it's it's weird (laughs) (laughs) it it, it is and and ambi is its own brand in itself So the question that I have for you is for the people that may be struggling with some growth, people that want the want the following, they want the attention, they want people to enjoy what they do. I know Mm -hmm. that you said that you had some self-doubt in in one of your Q&A's. You had a little bit of self-doubt when it came to what you were doing, uh, you you know, your, your interview career, stuff like that. So my question is. Do you have any advice for the people out there that are trying to start their own brand or just basically market themselves 
in their profession? Do you have any advice for the people that may have some self-doubt or, or maybe even some tips to help grow? Yeah, when it gets tough, just don't give up on yourself. That's the biggest thing because my confidence has always been pretty iffy since I was little. And I obviously I don't mean in the interviewing aspect, but just in general. So me stepping into this industry was super hard. And if I didn't push through trolls and all of the no's I got when I first started and just waited for that first one yes that changed everything I wouldn't be where I am now which still is nowhere where I want to be in the end but I'd say I you know I've created something pretty cool and it's just because I stuck with it so no matter if people say mean things about your work or your appearance or they shoot you down or even if you have doubts because no one else is doing what you're doing because when I really decided to take this on full time I was graduating high school and everybody 99% of people were going to university and college and I thought to myself shit am I making the right or wrong decision Mm -hmm. and you know I stuck with it um so just it's cheesy but believe in yourself and have the confidence in yourself because if you show that you have that confidence then other people see it in you and that leads to the second biggest tip I have which is just network uh really put yourself out there don't be afraid to be embarrassed Mm -hmm. if there's something you're scared to do and you shit the bed it happens you can get past it uh (laughs) happens to the best of us it happens to professionals yeah so yeah just don't don't be afraid to put yourself out there and any self-doubt you have just surround yourself with really cool people in your life and they'll help you through it i love it i love it that's uh, and i was kind of expecting you to say that um but then again it's because we did our research but uh it's it it really is it's some of the it's some of the best advice you can get now clearly we are nowhere near when it comes to uh you know i I guess social media and and just in the public's eye you know we're nothing big we're nothing interesting we have you know close to twenty thousand followers combined and i get that too sometimes i mean once again you are your career is incredible so far and there's still so much to come and it's just just keep plugging away If, if Somebody doesn't like your stuff. Okay, next. You know, we'll move on to the next person. So, Prime, uh, what do you? What question do you have for? I actually want to hear some funny stories about the bay interview. Oh. Oh, you know what's funny is I've actually not had, and this is going to sound weird because I've hosted thousands. I've not had an interview where it was just bad. There have been times where people. And I'm not going to name names, but there have been times where people have been really tired and you can tell that they're not giving it their all. But, yeah. and I'm talking both on the music and wrestling side. Um, but I'd say in the last like three years, ever since I started wrestling, I've not had one bad wrestling interview. Um, but I'd say like three years ago, um, I haven't had anything negative. So I really wish I had like something juicy. And this isn't me not wanting to like toss bad stories around I've just been really lucky I feel like I've been able to connect with my guests and um, there's this famous interviewer in Canada named Nardwar like infamous Mm -hmm. and he said it's not about whether the interviewee is boring or not it's about how you can make them exciting so I've really taken that to heart I know right insightful so I really took that to heart and I'm like all right if someone walks in and they're super boring and dull and they have no stories like it's my job to pull that out of them and I feel like that mentality's really helped so yeah I haven't had a dull interview in probably like three four years and the one that was dull was just like these two musicians I interviewed were tired and they just kind of I don't really know why they were doing press to be quite honest yeah Um, I saw them do it to a couple of publications and you know it was what it was, but I've been I've been pretty lucky. Is now is is Hornswoggle as quiet when you speak to him as he is during your interviews? Um, like you mean off camera? <laughs> yeah, because when I was listening to the interview, I was sitting there. I was at work. I was listening to the interview. I was, I was passing some time, and I was like, you know what? He's got an incredibly soothing voice, but I think he's whispering. <laughs> um, backstage, he actually spoke exactly like in the interview as well. Oh my God, I guess be quiet and they have to listen to you. <laughs> so, uh, it's a power move. So um, we're going to ask you two more a piece and, and then we'll wrap it all up here. Once again, we do thank you for your time. Yeah, of course. And the one of the last questions I have for you is you've interviewed people from Paige to Tyler Bate and Trent Seven to Switchblade Jay White to Cody Rhodes to Jericho. Mm. Was there anyone that, I mean, I would probably get starstruck 
at all of them. But was there anyone that may have stood out a little bit more to you where you were like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, like starstruck big time? Um, The first time I interviewed Cody two years ago, uh, it was my first time meeting him. It was really two, three months into my wrestling career for me. I mean, not as a wrestler, but, you know, in the industry. Um, I got the opportunity to interview at Ring of Honor. And my mind was just blown. I was like, all right, I know that I started this career in music and I have this base. Um, you know, I, I'm known for that for, uh, for four years of busting my ass. But, mm-hmm. you know, after only doing wrestling for three months and getting the opportunity to interview one of my favorite wrestlers, it was surreal. And it, I got very starstruck. First time I interviewed Jericho, um, when I saw the Rainmaker, that like was insane. When I got a little bit with him for my site, Rey Mysterio. Yeah. It's just, oh man, there've been a lot and you know, I keep it together. It's not like there's any reason to not, they're, they're just people, but it's more so the meaning behind it where you're like, oh man, you've like really helped me through stuff. Or I remember watching yeah. you, I told Jericho like, dude, I've been watching you since I was like three. <laughs> oh, thank you. Rock on. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Oh, man. So, yes, it's just moments like that where you're just, holy crap, my job's brought me to this. That's in, that's amazing. Yeah. That, that is, I would I would piss my pants in front of, you, in front of any of them. But <laughs> I, I, I had to ask. I had to ask if there was one that stood out to you. So, Prime, second to last question you have for her, what would that be? Okay, so I watch some of your videos on Twitch where you and Anthony uh, do the, uh, well, y'all talk and y'all like watch videos and stuff. So, when you're doing that, doing that with him, what are the most, you know, the most videos that y'all watch that stand out in your mind? As in videos, you mean um, like old TNA clips yeah. or? Oh, okay. Um, for me, a lot of the time, whenever Christopher Daniels or Frankie Kazarian are in the ring, like I, I love watching. <laughs> Not just because of SCU, just like SCU. before I did too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Those are always fun because they always do some crazy high spots, and then Anthony goes full on commentator mode. I'm like, did you see what they just did? Oh my god! So I really love whenever that happens. Um, <laughs> and then we get some really weird brawls where it's like this bizarre six way, and I don't remember what it was called, but like one of them you had to like use fish to hit your opponents. It was like a fish brawl. <laughs> and the shark. Boy. Yeah, and I'm like. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell am I watching? Like, this is hilarious. And fans love watching them. And then Anthony and I just look at each other and we'll, I'm like, Corelli, why did they vote for this? But then we're entertained, and, you know. So I like the high flying stuff because it amuses him, which amuses me in turn. And then I like the really weird ones with stupid stipulations. <laughs> <laughs> Smack each other with a fish for 15 minutes. That'll keep anybody entertained. <laughs> All right, so Alicia, my last question that I have for you, and then Prime will ask you his last one, and we'll wrap it up here. The last question that I have for you is that quote that you gave us um, from the interviewer in Canada. I apologize. I forgot his name. What was his name? Nardwar. Nardwar. Besides that, because I besides that quote, because I feel like it's a great piece of advice, was there any – advice that you received it could be from anybody it could be from you know your family it could be from anybody famous somebody behind the stage uh, behind the scenes was there anybody was there any piece of advice that you that you can see sticking with you for the rest of your life when it comes to the career path that you, that you chose um there there's two well actually there's three but i'll just i'll just tell you two if you want okay yeah two will work <laughs> two works um one was from my dad he told me when i first started this whole business of mine um don't worry about any of the no's all it takes is one yes and I think I kind of reiterated that earlier but it's true Mm -hmm. if you have 20 people tell you no and then this one huge opportunity comes around and says yes that one yes could literally change your life so that's one and then another one is um I had the pleasure of meeting and chatting with Mean Gene a few months ago before he passed away and I uh he had a big line and I was doing some hosting and I ended up speaking with him and he like he stopped signing and I was like no sign sign and he was like intrigued and wanted to talk and I was like this is weird and cool and he asked me what I do and what I'm doing there and I I filled him in and then he's like just from conversing with you right now you're just so natural kid keep doing what you're doing I can tell you're going to be something one day and that just like that just blew my mind and 
you're trying to make yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, it was just very a very surreal moment for me, and it wasn't. It was advice in a way. Just keep doing what you're doing because mm-hmm. it was at a standstill where I was just started doing conventions, and I was starting to see a big change in my in my career. And having this legend who literally kind of paved the way for interviewers like us, Mm -hmm. um, just saying, you know, you got something good. Just keep at it. Don't worry if you're kind of at a standstill now. Things will get better. Just keep doing it. It, I did. And things got even better. So words like that. that Pretty, pretty cool. Words like that from the late, great Mean Gene have got to just light a spark under your ass. Yeah. That's that's (laughs) incredible. That, that's amazing. We're making tears come out my eyes, man. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god. There's no crying on this show. Well, there might be. It's actually, it's good ratings. So what um, <laughs> So Prime to finish up everything here with the wonderful Alicia to what would your last question be? Okay, so you're in the crowd at one at a Steel Panther concert, right? Yes, yes, let's and, do this. Oh god. And they are covering any song that you want. What song would you want to hear? <gasps> oh damn. Okay. I think it would be so funny to hear Still Panther cover like a Spice Girl song. Oh my god. I know how weird that sounds, but listen, Spice Girls was the first concert I ever went to. My mom took me when I was three. Uh-huh. And they I just like I'm a nineties kid. I I love Spice Girls. Oh, yeah. And Still Panther are now like one of my top three bands of all time. So to hear my favorite live band cover the first band I ever saw live and I know they do some kick ass weird rendition of it with some badass guitar solo. I Oh my god, it would be amazing. So a Spice Girl song. That has to be it, yeah. A Spice Girl song. It's incredible that you said that because I'm I'm not even ashamed of saying this. I've never heard the song Say You'll Be There by the Spice Girls until I'm gonna say a week ago, right? What? I have been listening to this song every day. Isn't it so good? And then when they go like uh they do the whole like middle eight and then they get all in your face with their attitude is so good. Oh my god, huge Spice Girls fan. So everybody, that's our little interview with the queen of interviews, Alicia to Alicia, on behalf of myself, on behalf of Prime, on behalf of everyone in the Turnbuckle Topics family, I want to thank you for taking the time out to speak to us today. And we wish you nothing but the best in your future career opportunities. I want to say thank you so much to you guys, to everyone listening right now a fan of mine already or you're just discovering me through this awesome podcast just thank you so much uh for listening to me ramble <laughs> and um thank you so much to you too just for being awesome i had so much fun on awesome this. so alicia you have yourself a great day we'll talk to you soon and make sure you tune in next week for the next episode of the rundown wrestling podcast Hey, all you podcast fans out there, interested in starting your own podcast, but not entirely sure where to start, then look no further. Anchor is one of the most quick and easy ways to start your own podcast and also get it broadcasted to all the major podcast platforms out there. All you have to do is go to anchor.fm forward slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. Once again, that's anchor.fm forward slash start. I can't wait to hear what you have. Thanks a lot. What's up, everybody? If you liked the interview that you just heard and you're a fan of the Rundown podcast, make sure to throw us a like, comment, subscribe, anything that you have to do. And hey, if you like listening to it, make sure you tell your friends, your family, your dogs, whoever you think will listen, make sure you let them know that you like what you hear. If you'd like to support us, all you have to do is go on anchor.com, anchor.fm, and find Turnbuckle Topics, the Rundown Podcast. There'll be a link there if you'd like to support us. $1, $2 a month, anything like that certainly helps. So people, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being a fan of the Rundown Podcast. We have a lot more coming in the future from all members of the Turnbuckle Topics family, and we can't wait to share it with each and every one of you. But for now, Turnbuckle Topics, we're out.